It was months ago we talked about how active this season was going to be, mm-hmm. Alex. But the ad, the other added concern we have is that we could be looking at rapid intensification of these storms this year. I want you to explain what that means and why we're so concerned about that. Rapid intensification is, I think, a word we're going to be hearing a lot this tropical season. Rapid intensification is when a tropical system strengthens rapidly 35 miles per hour or more in a 24-hour period. Now, there's three ingredients that we typically look for that can give us a clue as to uh, if a system is going to undergo rapid intensification. We look for very warm water, we look for low wind shear, and we look for plenty of moisture. And I think we're going to be having those three ingredients very prevalent this hurricane season. And obviously when we're taking a look at this hurricane season, we oftentimes compare it with last year. Now last year we still had an above average or above uh, historical average number of named storms despite the fact and um, despite the fact that we had uh, an El Nino and a La Nina going on here. Let me just go back to my graphics here a second here, Alex. L- let's first talk about the water temperatures and then we'll get to the El Nino and La Nina. Yeah, the water temperatures are going to be a main contributor for this year's season. Pretty much the entirety of the Atlantic Basin is several degrees above average for this time of year. There's some places that are even comparable to where we should be in August right now, and that is a very deep concern. Now, let's get back to this a second, um, Alex. I want to get into uh, the El Nino and La Nina that we've been, uh, that we've been talking about. Let's, let's get to this. This was last year where we actually had an El Nino, even though we had above normal number of storms. Yeah, we saw an above average season last year despite the El Nino conditions. Now during an El Nino, we typically see more wind shear across the Atlantic Basin, which can typically inhibit development. However, those really warm ocean temperatures kind of compensated for that additional wind shear, and we still saw an above average year. This year, we have those really warm ocean temperatures, and we're expected to have less wind shear due to a La Nina. So that's why we're really concerned that this season could be even more active than last season. Let's get back to the water temperatures here. I mean, Alex, w- when you look at the water temperatures now, from what I understand, it, it, it's almost more typical of what you would see in August. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. It sure is. And the depth of the water is also very important to talk about here. I was just taking a look at the latest maps, and in, in the Caribbean Sea there, the 80-degree water temperature extends as much as 300 feet below the surface of the ocean. This is essentially going to be rocket fuel, I think, for the tropical season, and that's why we're so concerned about rapid intensification. And as we mentioned, it's going to be a very busy mm-hmm. season. Just really quickly go over the numbers, Alex. Yeah, taking a look at the numbers here, again, we're forecasting 20 to 25 named storms well above the average. 8 to 12 of those expected to be hurricanes. 4 to 7 majors, that's Cat 3 or more. And 4 to 6 direct impacts on the United States.